Southwest Airlines has canceled thousands more flights. That's where we're starting the 7 from the Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Wednesday, December 28th. Let's get you caught up with today's 7 Stories. Number one, Southwest Airlines accounted for about 85% of canceled flights in the U.S. yesterday. The company's CEO, Bob Jordan, apologized to customers in a video. Whether you haven't been able to get to where you need to go, or you're one of our heroic employees caught up in a massive effort to stabilize the airline, we're doing everything we can to return to a normal operation. And please also hear that I'm truly sorry. The airline is having major issues after a massive storm caused a travel meltdown over the holiday weekend. Passengers are stranded all over the country. So what's being done? Southwest said that it's trying to get things back on schedule by the end of the week. In the meantime, it's working to process refunds for affected passengers. Number two. The Supreme Court left a pandemic-era border policy in place. For now. That policy, known as Title 42, allows the U.S. to turn away people seeking asylum. The Biden administration wants to end the policy. It had been set to expire last week, before the Supreme Court stepped in. Justices voted in a 5-4 to ruling yesterday to keep Title 42 in place until February. That's when the court could consider legal challenges to the plans. Here's number three. The co-leader of a failed plot to kidnap Michigan's governor will do some serious jail time. We're talking about a 39-year-old named Adam Fox. He was part of a right-wing extremist plan to abduct Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer ahead of the 2020 presidential election. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison yesterday. This is the longest sentence yet in what has been the highest-profile domestic terrorism case in recent years. Number four, shocking videos show just how hard China is getting hit by the coronavirus. A huge COVID wave has hit the country after it lifted its severe pandemic restrictions earlier this month. Videos shared online and analyzed by the posts show emergency rooms overflowing, leaving patients sleeping in hallways and wait lines extending into the streets. The full extent of the outbreak is unclear. But these videos undercut Beijing's insistence that they have the surge under control. The U.S. is considering restrictions on travelers from China. Most of Jackson, Mississippi, has been without water since Christmas Eve. That's our fifth story today. Officials say the issue is being caused by a leak somewhere in the system, but they're struggling to find it. It's part of an ongoing problem. Federal officials say that city leaders have long mismanaged the system. That led to a collapse in early 2021 when a storm took it offline for a month. Number six, tech billionaires lost billions of dollars in 2022. It wasn't a great year for tech companies. Stocks fell dramatically and many began hiring freezes and mass layoffs. Elon Musk, The CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, and most recently Twitter lost around $132 billion. But don't worry about them too much. These billionaires still have more money than many small countries. For example, Facebook's founder, Mark Zuckerberg, his net worth is still more than the GDP of Iceland. And number seven, a star NBA player made history last night. And that drew rim, it's still loose, Luka got it back! He did it! He did it! An improbable comeback by Dallas to tie it! Luka The Dallas Mavericks came back to beat the New York Knicks 126 to 121 in overtime yesterday. And it was all thanks to Luka Doncic. The Mavs point guard posted a record setting 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. 
It's the first 60-20-10 triple-double in NBA history, and it ties James Harden's record of 60 points in a triple-double. That music can only mean one thing, that you're all caught up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the show wherever you're listening right now. You could also leave us a review on Apple. I especially liked one review from a parent that said that they listen to the show with their kids. I'm Jeff Pierre. Let's do it again tomorrow. 